me. So, I feel like gates and expanders are a bit underutilized by the modern music producer. I mean, unless you're recording a lot of instruments or broadcasting, you might not know the purpose for these two very similar dynamics processors and how to use them creatively. I'm here to shed some light. Let's get started. So our first example is going to be on this voiceover. So gating is very popularly used in uh, broadcasting. On the radio, the guy will actually have a, a unit in the room, a dynamics processor in the room, and he will be speaking through the gate and into the broadcast or into the recording software uh, so that when he stops talking, the mic shuts off and goes down to silence. So, you know, any sounds in the room that are below the threshold of him speaking will be taken out. So we'll set that up and we're going to use the Reason Rack. Uh, I'm going to start here because it's a very easy gate to dial in. It's a little simplified, but in a good way. Yeah, so let's set this up. So this is the threshold parameter. You set this to below the signal that you want to keep. So kind of the opposite of, of compression, right? So if the broadcaster's level is here and you want to hear him, you're going to set the threshold of the gate to below his speaking voice, but above the noise that you want to take out. So everything below the threshold gets attenuated, gets turned down. And how much it gets turned down is controlled by this range parameter. So if the range is all the way up, it will turn the signal all the way down. See, this is a negative, negative 40 dB. So that's all the way down to the floor. You can control that range. If you go all the way uh, down with the range to zero, then you're not attenuating anything at all. You can see the gate's open. All the lights are off. Gate closed. Lights are on. Okay, and then release controls how quickly the gate goes from open to closed. So, you know, it's, it's in the time domain and it works hand in hand. It works in concert with this hold parameter. The hold parameter tells the release parameter when to start releasing. So right away, uh, go through your 251 millisecond, 300, 300 millisecond release phase or Wait 198 milliseconds till you do your 300 millisecond release phase. Does that make sense? So let's mess with our signal. If I turn this off, let me just get this out of the way so you can see the signal. Uh, this, is some, this is some voiceover I recorded uh, for my last video. Oh, real quick, if you could hit the like button really quick, just scroll down, hit it really quick. It'd really be helping me out. Uh, you know, powerful message. You can see that when I stop speaking, there's like, this is like computer noise, maybe the fan noise on my computer, stuff like that. So in order to clean this audio up, you could put a gate on it and lower the threshold to below my speaking voice. You know, my speaking voice is here. If you set the threshold down in this area, but above this area, then the gate will close on the silences and actually make them silent. So let's, let's mess around with that. I'm going to raise the threshold all the way. And when I hit play, the gate stays closed, and then I can pull the threshold really down. Quick. It'd really be helping me out. Uh, you know how this goes. Uh, the like button, uh, leave a comment, and really help me out by hitting... And then we can raise the release a little bit so that it closes a little slower. So it catches everything. And oh, real quick, if you could hit the like button really quick, just scroll down, hit it. I mean, you could open the threshold even more just to make sure you catch everything, including those little breaths. Oh, real quick, if you could hit the like button really quick, just scroll down, hit it really quick. It'd really be helping me out. Uh, pretty straightforward. We're just getting, making sure that the silences are silent. Uh, that's a common use. Moving on. Another common use for gating is in live drum type scenarios. And you can hear there's a lot of, there's a lot of room in there like a lot of the you can hear each hit ring out in in the space that it's in so if i turn the gate on and turn the range all the way up and maybe like a decently fast release and start pushing into the signal you'll hear the each hit get shorter and then you'll also hear as i get near the top you'll hear a lot of the quieter hits the kind of hats start disappearing so let's do that You can already hear the 
room getting shorter. Now we mostly just have the kick and snare. Let's move the release all the way down. Now we're getting some kind of like it's opening and closing really quick. So let's open up the release so that it's fading a little slower. And let's go even higher and see if we can just get just the snare. Now we have just the snare. And if we use this hold parameter, we can try, we can try to grab the whole snare. That's the snare with the room. Or we can shorten the snare using this release. Now we have this tiny little tight snare. So you can see kind of how you can use the gate almost as like a transient designer as well. Let's see what happens if we use this fast parameter. So the attack is faster, but interestingly, it sounds like we're kind of losing some, some of the attack. Yeah, it feels a little punchier to me without the fast on. Now, if we lower the range, you'll start to hear the stuff that's beneath the threshold, the stuff that isn't the snare starts kind of fading back in but it's much quieter than it was before. It's quieter than the snare. Which brings me to expansion. Expansion is gating, but it's like more chilled out gating. So if I turn the expander on, one, the threshold is no longer a set value. It's more scaled. And also if you jack the range all the way up, uh, you still won't pull the signal down to the floor. Whatever's below the threshold won't get pulled all the way down to the floor. So. Let me just leave this range all the way up and I'll turn the expander on and off. So off, we're just getting the snare like we did before. Turn the expander on. And we're getting a lot more. Now if I open the range, we get even more. But if you listen, the snare is still much louder than everything else, everything that's below the threshold. So. Remember, the snare is the loudest part of the signal, and we set the threshold to be just beneath that, that snare, and everything below that with the expander off is getting attenuated all the way down with the range all the way up. Uh, and if we turn the expander on, it's doing the same thing, except for it never, even with the range all the way up, it's never going to push them all the way down to the ground. So the effect is everything below the threshold moves to be even quieter. See how my hands are moving apart? They're expanding, so we're expanding the dynamic range of the signal. The snare stays where it is because it's above the threshold. Everything else moves down to whatever range you set. And that, that's the effect. The effect is they're further apart. They have expanded, we have expanded the dynamic range. Compressors work in the opposite way, right? Everything above the threshold comes down towards the quiet parts. Compression expansion just so you know what they mean when they say expander they mean it expands the dynamic range of your program yeah okay so those are the two like kind of straightforward uses for gates um, i want to show you another look at a gate so we'll pull that one up this one has a few more parameters this is the kilohertz gate uh if you're using the reason rack by the way and you have and you don't know this um Kilohertz has an entire bundle of rack extensions that are free. You should totally go grab them. All their stuff is great. Um, and then this one, if you're using, if your DAW has a gate that has more parameters, it's most likely going to be these parameters. Um, the Ableton gate has the same exact parameters, except they call tolerance return, I think. But anyway, uh, it's very similar threshold, range, hold, release. But now we have an attack parameter and it works really well because this plugin has look ahead so it sets like five milliseconds of delay into your signal and that way it can look five milliseconds into the future and really grab those transients so it's it's a faster gate 
than the previous gate we were using, the SSL gate. And then it has this tolerance feature, which kind of makes the threshold into a bit of a range. So this is the actual threshold, this top line. And then the second line is like, well, let it drop below this range before you really start working on it. it you got to kind of feel what that feels like. So let me listen to this, show you this program without negating. Uh, also, not just to show you these new parameters, but I also wanted to show you another use for gating. I, I, use, I use gates a lot on loops, and I don't know how many. This is where I feel like the modern music producer is missing a thing or two. Uh, I remember watching Future Music Magazine, if you remember them. They used to have all those tutorials on uh, you know, how to make music, and it would be, always be some pro. And I watched this one. I can't remember which uh, DJ producer it was. But he was using all these vengeance samples as they do at the time, as they did at the time. And uh, every time he pulled up a loop, he would immediately put a gate on it and see what it sounded like gated. Um, a, to try to see if he wanted to clean up any of the extras they added to it. And B, you can change the loop with just gating and you can change the groove of the loop with just gating because you can control how quickly the attacks attack. Uh, and how quickly the releases release. <laughs> so let's mess around with this gate and see what it does on this material. So let's raise the threshold all the way. A uh, little bit of tolerance. Slow down the attack a little bit. Slow down the release a little bit. And let's push into it. Now it's like tighter and not all the hits are coming through. Here's the original. That's kind of a different loop. Go a little bit higher on the... Lower the release. Make it quicker. Now they're like tighter hits. You got to hear it in your mix though. Like you bring in a loop and... You play it as it is, and then you start gating it around and see what happens within your mix. I mean, you know, loops aren't meant to stand on their own. So you got to hear what it sounds like in your mix, and maybe you, you use it to take out all the extra, like, reverb that you're hearing in it. Maybe use it just to shorten the hits so that you can add the reverb that's in your song. Use the whole parameter to get a little more of each hit. And the attack on this because of the on this gate because of the look ahead is very quick. So you can really catch the transients, shorten them. Or you can even raise the attack and kind of shave the transients off. Almost like a transient designer again. Super tight version of it. So yeah, gating to change up loops, tighten up loops. I think that's something that you might want to look into there, modern music producer. Let's start using gates to effect. So I have this loop here. It just does that. And then I also have this loop here. It just does that. But I'm going to put a gate. I don't know why I just closed that. I'm going to put a gate on the synth. 
and I'm going to use the sidechain input to point this rhythmic piece, and I'm going to make this sends only so it doesn't go out to the output. So the sidechain is going into the reason rack effect, and I need to point that sidechain to the gate. Turn off the compressor, turn on the gate, and now I can make this synth more interesting by gating it against the rhythm of this. So check this out. This is a creative use for gating. We will set the range all the way up, speed up the release a bit, and let's activate the sidechain, and let's pull in to the signal. Before the gating. After the gating. Let's try this fast setting just to see what happens. Now that sounds pretty cool. So you can see how we're taking the rhythm from the percussion and we're using it to trigger this gate. And that sounds pretty sweet, but in the Reason Rack, we can get a little more creative than that even because there are EV jacks on the back of everything. Let's grab a filter and let's accentuate. We'll use the kilohertz filter. So I'm in a kilohertz mood. Uh, we'll use the gate gain CV out to control the cutoff of the low pass filter I have here. So let's get this set up. I'll jack the Q so you can actually hear that it's moving. But we don't want that. We want just a little bit of Q. And let's actually control uh, the amount that this CV is affecting the cutoff. That sounds pretty cool. Okay. So now the gate, the gain reduction of the gate is affecting the movement of this cutoff filter. And then also, obviously, the gate is being affected by the rhythm of the percussion that I sidechained. Let's let's uh let's set up some sort of interesting panning situation. I'm just I'm just flowing over here. We'll grab a line mix there. Its output's actually coming from this one, and we'll route this one through that one. And this pan knob has a CV input. So we'll take the output from the spider CV, which is it's all just coming from here, and it's all getting split out to other places there. And let's see what happens. It's panning, but it's kind of leaning to the right. If I offset this. It's kind of weird, it's moving too fast. Let's chill this out a bit. It's kind of doing a little pan thing. So yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty cool. So yeah, I just the whole point here is so, so that you can see that you can really get creative with gating, uh, especially here in the Reason Rack with all this CV stuff and the kind of modularness of it, modularness <laughs> of it. So yeah, using gating to clean things up using gates to, you know, for the voiceover type situation, 
uh, and also using them creatively by having some sort of side chain, side chain input affect the gate. You can really uh, do a lot with gate. So yeah, we like that one.